This is the true story of the American Revolutionary War. The one that historians are too afraid to tell you because the American army was actually led by Twitch chat and the British army was actually led by an AI version of King George III from Britain. You shan't escape the long cultured arm of Great Britain, you revolutionary turds. In this historical reenactment, the Americans will start with the bottom six colonies, the British will start with the top six colonies, and the first side to take over 10 of the 13 colonies wins the whole war. And as we all know, the first battle took place in the colony of Delaware, I, I think. So let's start by having Twitch Chat decide their strategy for the Great Battle of Delaware. New Delaware. Oppenheimer. This We are in 1776, okay? Disguise as the British? Like, to surprise them? Now, guys, I don't believe there's any bias, but one of our British VIPs has suggested surrendering immediately and ceding full control of the country to Britain. That is an option. Someone suggested destroy Delaware so nobody can have it. Offer opium to King George to get him addicted. <laughs> oh, that's historically relevant and funny. Send in George Washington. Somebody you wanted with a chainsaw. You don't have that in 1776. I'll say with an axe which he may or may not have used. That story is real. I'd like to speak for Britain and just say we don't want Delaware. If we get <laughs> it, we want to cut it off Look, and send it adrift. That's the problem with the Brits right now. You don't have control because this is back in 1776 when you had a king who just did whatever the hell he wanted, right? These are good options, y'all. What do you do? Their first move of the Revolutionary War is to destroy Delaware so that the British <laughs> can't have it. There was no indication that you couldn't have it, but this is good. How exactly do you want to do this? You do not have nukes. This is 1776. Push it into the ocean. Salt the fields. Eat it. Okay, you have decided to eat Delaware. I don't know what novel AI will do with that information, but you will try. <laughs> God bless America. Now, we will ask King George from Britain his strategy for this battle. Okay, King George, the battle for the American colonies has officially begun. The first battle is going to be taking place in Delaware, sir. What strategy would you like to employ on this battlefield? I want like a big dramatic entrance out of the gate, because as long as it's something big and boisterous, he can stop you from eating Delaware. Ah, Delaware filled with more empty space than a Scottish man's understanding of dental hygiene. Why is he roasting the Scottish? We shall weaponize the oh-so-beloved British obsession with orderly cues. Hear me out. It's not as absurdum vulgaris, a fancy term for utterly bollocks, that you peasants wouldn't get. We'll line up our troops in a disciplined queue, convince those Yankee rebels we're there for their laughable Black Friday sales. As they approach to join in, they will find themselves surrounded. Their love for bargains, their downfall. Like confusion Using a coyote with a garden gnome, they won't see it coming until it's gnawing at their ankles. We'll make them shit bricks all wrapped up in Union Jacks before they know what hit them. This will teach those uncouth scoundrels not to mess with the king who single-handedly outdrank the entire Irish Navy. Why you feel that, colonists? That's British cunning descending upon you like a very polite tea-loving hawk. Why is he shitting on Scotland and Ireland? What's wrong with this guy? No, don't that's my king him. You're betraying America. Now that both sides have a battle plan, we will use novel AI to accurately determine which side wins the Battle of Delaware. And I don't actually remember much American history because I took it in middle school and got bad grades. I'm pretty sure this is accurate though. The first battle will take place in Delaware. King George began the battle by lining up his troops in a Black Friday sale and then pouncing on the American soldiers when they attempt to join in on the sale. Meanwhile, the American Revolutionary attempt to eat all of Delaware so that the British can't have it. Meanwhile, the British send in some spies. These spies are disguised as bacon. This makes the American revolutionaries upset, so they throw them in the Delaware River and take the bacon. The American revolutionaries try to get the bacon back, but they don't have time. And then the battle begins. The British army attacks and kills all of the Americans. The battle is won and the British celebrate by dancing around the Delaware River, which has a huge hole in it from where they threw the spies. Unfortunately, your strategy of not attacking did not seem to work, chat. Delaware has the highest cancer rate in the nation. No joke. Well, maybe the Brits will get cancer there now. So this is promising. A strong start, I would say, from you guys. Can we turn Ohio into an ocean? Ohio is currently in Quebec, which is owned by the British? Who owned Quebec at this time? No, the French. I'm dumb. Is Rupert's land the British? I don't know who Rupert is. Fantastic job, King George. Your army managed to kill the American revolutionary stationed in Delaware and threw him into the river hole. Now you have Maryland and Pennsylvania as colonies that you can attempt to take next. Which one do you attack and what is your strategy? Strategy. Be ready for the smartest strategy you've ever heard in your life. Well, fuck me sideways with a crumpet. Isn't that a fine pickle? Maryland or Pennsylvania, eh? Let's go with Maryland, the home of absurd quantities of blue crabs, which are clearly vastly inferior to our noble British lobster. <laughs> 
The strategy, gentlemen, True. is audacious, daring, and definitely top draw Manus Manum Lavat, which means mutual back scratching, you uncultured buffoons. We shall barrage the coastline with okay. leftover fish and chips wrapped in copies of the Times, an idea as British as a corgi eating a scone. These American yokels will scuttle crab-like to collect the feast, only to be met with our well-disciplined troops That's smart. popping out of gigantic teapots. Okay. You Yanks aren't prepared for these levels of British subterfuge, are ya? All right, chat. The next battle is taking place in Maryland. What is your strategy? Somebody said make the Statue of Liberty into a mech. That's fine, but you have to build it too. <laughs> Or marbles on the battlefield. I mean, simple but effective. Throw really angry Maryland crabs at them. Send a team to steal Stonehenge. Stonehenge doesn't exist yet. <laughs> I don't think that's correct. Marry Maryland to France? I just feel like you do want colonies, just so you know. Organize a crab rave. Doesn't seem like a great, none of these seem like particularly good uh, battle tactics. It looks like you were going to turn the Statue of Liberty into a mech. Now, the Statue of Liberty does not exist at this point, but you're gonna try to build it and then send it into battle, I guess. I'm sure it'll work out. I don't see any issues with that. Next, a great battle took place in the colony of Maryland. The British army barraged the coastline of Maryland with leftover fish and chips wrapped in copies of the Times. They hoped to ambush the Americans as they tried to eat the food by popping out of gigantic teapots. Meanwhile, the American troops attempted to build a mechanized Statue of Liberty and send it into battle against against the Brits. The Statue of Liberty ended up being too heavy, so it fell into the ocean while still attached to a boat full of revolutionaries who were trying to catch it. The boat sunk and the revolutionaries drowned. That's just a loss, right? It's a submarine. I'll do one continue, let's see. Then the British army became a firework show in honor of the victory. When the fireworks were done, the American troops attempted to light up the entire sky with fireworks. The fireworks eventually destroyed New York City, which had recently been liberated by the Americans. Okay, British win Maryland, but they also burnt down New York for some reason. Good news, sir. You've just taken Maryland. Your plan worked perfectly because the revolutionaries built a Statue of Liberty and then it sunk the boat they were in and they all drowned. Maryland is now officially British. Next up, you could attack Pennsylvania or Virginia from within Maryland. Which state would you like to attack and what is your strategy? You don't have New York. You destroyed the whole city. We liberated it. <laughs> you burnt it to the ground. We crowned the land of crabs, but toasted New York, bugger. Well, above everything, we Brits know how to throw a bloody good ruckus, don't we? As for our next target, I'd fancy squashing those Pennsylvania pretentious prats. <laughs> now, gentlemen, listen exceptionally keenly to our strategy. We're going to flood them with our royal tea. Our highly esteemed chemists have bred a unique strain of English tea leaves, the Karana Saker, or the Ooh. holy shit that strong tea, as it's lovingly called at court. We shall brew a giant vat of this potent tea and disperse it across Pennsylvania, effectively plunging them into a very British fog stupor. This, my good chaps, is a classic example of British finesse, turning a harmless high tea into a dangerous warfare weapon. Why is he so sensual and talking really quietly? Wrote the microphone. Dude, I don't, you guys might finally just lose. This guy seems like a fucking genius. I think Twitch chat may have finally met their match. I would love to watch you guys lose. You're too cocky. You've had too many strings of successes. It's time for a brutal loss. Britain is up to eight colonies. Next battle is in Pennsylvania. Chat, what do you want to do? Send in Abraham Lincoln. I mean, it's a little early. B baby. <laughs> Air strike the British. This is 1776. When were the Wright brothers? That was in the 1900s, right? Yeah, it's too early. It's way too early. Sure, okay, bomb them from a hot air balloon. I'll allow that. One thing you do have is the Liberty Bell, right? You could use the bell for something. I, I don't exactly know what, but I feel like there's potential there, yeah? Make the Liberty Bell a mech. I mean, I think this is one of those situations where you gotta try again. By the way, for any non-God-fearing, freedom-loving, beer-drinking Americans here, let us walk you through what happened with the the Liberty Bell and why it is so important to us. It is, it has a crack. I know that. So thrilled by their victory, the British army now advanced on the colony of Pennsylvania. They brewed a giant vat of their famous, holy shit, that strong tea and tried to disperse it across Pennsylvania to plunge the revolutionaries into a foggy British stupor. Meanwhile, the American revolutionaries attempt to turn the Liberty Bell into a gigantic mechanized battle bell to attack the British. But they fail, as the Liberty Bell is too heavy, and they end up losing their entire army as they try to move it. Dude, you guys are getting destroyed. Meanwhile, a mysterious French spy arrived on the shores of New Jersey. His name was King George. No, but the French didn't know that. He snuck into a small fishing village and sold a bunch of French stuff. Okay, so I guess King George is like moonlighting as a French spy and selling stuff in Jersey. But you do lose Pennsylvania. You guys are getting annihilated, man. It didn't say we lost it. Your whole army died. He marched into Pennsylvania 
Transylvania and your entire army was killed by the Liberty Bell. You lost your entire army. That's enough. I swear this AI is on British mode. I think you guys are just being outplayed. Also, am I insane? Snuck is a word, right? It wants me to say suck. He sucked into a fishing village. King George, you've won the battle. Pennsylvania is now in the hands of the British Empire. Your strategy to brew a giant pot of holy shit that strong tea wasn't actually relevant because they all killed themselves with their mech again. Also, we know about your little spying as a French soldier and selling their stuff in Jersey. You're not fooling anybody here. Anyways, it looks like Virginia is next on the menu. What is your battle tactic to take the colony of Virginia, sir? The audacity of these rebellions trying to get my knickers is almost endearing. Virginia is our dish of the day. I might as well whip up a nice Yorkshire pudding while we're at it. Oh, oh. My plan involves the Queen's werewolves. Yes, you heard it right. Lupus Regini, or as you commoners call them, royal furry fangs. Is These buggers smell biscuits from miles away. I say we send them a bunch of spotted dick sponges. No American can resist a oddly named dessert. Soon, Virginia shall be ours. And as for that spying nonsense, I call it business perpetuity, as the French would say, right before so rendering, so get that factored in. Am I not magnanimously genius? God, King George is fucking brutal, man. He is not holding back at all. You're up. Battle for Virginia. <laughs> Buy French soldiers from King George in Jersey. Use his own wares against him. Send in Bigfoot to fight the werewolves. Turn the White House into a rocket. Now, he's using werewolves, so I would allow this, but this would be your third attempt to make a mech out of some American symbol, and it will probably fail again. Recruit all the virgins. Is that why Virginia's named that? Make a virgin mech. It's just, I think you should move on from the mech strategy. George Washington challenges King George to a boxing match. That's good. I'm honestly surprised you aren't going for turn the White House into a rocket. It looks like you are going for George Washington challenges King George to a boxing match. And this could really go anywhere. Next, the Great Battle of Virginia began. The American Revolutionary sent George Washington to challenge King George III to a boxing match, winner takes all. Not super clear what it'll do with this phrase, but the British prepared for battle by spreading spotted dick sponges all over Virginia and then having the Queen's werewolves lie in wait to attack. Who will win in this great battle for Virginia? Will it be George Washington's boxing match challenge or the spotted dick sponge werewolves? When the battle began, King George III knocked Washington down with a hard break cross. Then King George got a standing ovation from his French supporters who were sitting at the back of the arena. The damn French! The crowd started chanting, Viva l'Empereur! And the king, after getting over his shock, countered by landing a fierce left hook on George Washington, which sent him reeling. In the fourth round, George Washington managed to regain his footing and took a moment to assess the damage to his body. He was hurt and he had lost a tooth, but he still felt confident that he could win the fight. So he approached the king cautiously, but with determination and threw a combination of left jabs and body punches at his opponent. King George III, meanwhile, was confident that he would win this fight. He had the advantage of being British, after all, but he hadn't realized how powerful his opponent was, and he soon found himself in trouble. He ducked and weaved, but the American soldier kept hitting him. Then he threw a series of kicks at Washington, that's not allowed, who wasn't able to avoid them all. He took some blows to the face, and the crowd booed, but he was still able to fight. It was time for the last round. Washington threw a hard right hook, knocking the king down to his knees. The British army was shocked, and they started to shout at their leader, get up! The king got to his feet, but his vision was blurry. His hands were shaking, he's bleeding and beaten, but he still had some strength left in him as he staggered towards his opponent. Washington threw a right cross that landed on his face. That's gotta be it, right? King George fell to the ground and the crowd went crazy. They started chanting, Viva la France! Then the French soldier that George Washington had met during his time in the military arrived and hit George in the face with a wooden box. What? You know, let's see where this goes. He turned to the crowd and said, Viva la France, and left. George Washington knelt next to the king and checked his pulse. The man was still alive, but he was in a deep sleep. Congratulations to the Americans. You defended Virginia. As a result of your win, you get a free research round. You can try to build whatever you want, and then you get to attack into one of the other colonies. What do you want to do on your research turn? Strip tons of dynamite to bald eagles. I like the idea that you don't have like a plan for this. You're just like, hey guys, we have some time before the next battle. Let's put bombs on our birds. Buy Alaska and turn it into a mech. You also have the option of trying to recruit Rupert from whatever the hell this is. All right, you're going to buy Alaska and turn it into a mech. With the battle won, George Washington and the Americans had some time to recuperate. So they tried to buy Alaska from the Russians and then turn it into a gigantic battle mech. But they failed. The Russians didn't want to sell Alaska to them because they thought they were insane. The Americans tried again, but this time they used, used a nuclear warhead to blow up Alaska and then sold it to the Japanese. Wait, they sold Alaska to the Japanese? Hold on, we're gonna let this ride. What did you get? In return for selling the nuked Alaska to Japan, the Americans received some cash. The cash was then used to build a battle mech in the 
then give it to the French army, which used it in the war with Britain. Here's what we're going to do. The attempt to turn Alaska into a battle mech has somehow resulted in you guys building a different mech, which was given to the French, who are now fighting Britain with it. So for the next battle, you guys will do your thing, and also France will be attacking Britain with a battle mech. We have nukes. I guess you technically... Yeah, I guess so. But we're going to say that nuclear warheads are dropped by bald eagles, because you definitely don't have airplanes yet. Nuke <laughs> George. Why would you nuke George Washington? Oh, you mean King George. Um, cool. That's a good development. So you're attacking Maryland. And this is a potentially massive turning point in the war now that French is also attacking Britain. You aren't necessarily allied with the French, though. They're just fighting the British, which is fairly historically accurate. Also, congratulations to France. You've entered the war. Bad news, King George. Our army was defeated in Virginia when you lost that boxing match to George Washington. Now the American revolutionaries are moving in on the colony of Maryland. You'll have to defend it. But we've heard disturbing reports. Apparently the revolutionaries have nuclear warheads and France has just entered the battle with some sort of giant battle mech. Sir, what is your strategy for the Battle of Maryland? Bloody hell. Nuclear what? You've been sipping too much tea, lad. The French with their battle necks? They're about as scary as a biscuit without tea. Okay. They'll crumble. Okay, we confident. shall employ the he's most confident. cunning strategy, one birthed from the bowels of our great culture, the cricket play. We will arrange our red coats into overs and innings, just like in a cricket match. Once the what? enemy becomes confused at our placement, our batsmen will charge with bayonets while our bowlers unleash a hellfire of lead. I don't Why know what work? cricket is. Have you seen these colonists try to understand cricket? They can't even hold a wicket properly. I That's like watching a Frenchman trying to make a delightful works. English scone. Uh -huh. Look, I don't know a single thing about how cricket works. Not one single thing. I watched like 10 seconds of it one time and it made no sense. It is incomprehensible as a sport. So he's correct. The Americans can't understand it. He also thought I said that the French have battle necks. So he just thinks they have like thick necks. So he might be underestimating them a little bit. All right. So he's got a plan for Maryland. You guys need a plan for Maryland. What is your strategy? You do have nukes now. <sighs> Strap a nuke on the Washington Monument and throw it at the British. I don't think the Washington Monument existed yet because George Washington is currently alive, but I'll let it fly. Challenge British to a baseball game. Yeah, that could work. Get Sam Adams to get him drunk off his beer. Again, I don't think the original founding father, Sam Adams, had a beer company yet, but could be wrong. Oh yeah, send Ben Franklin in. Yeah, you guys should be using Benjamin Franklin. He invented electricity, created it. I like the idea of strapping a nuke on the Washington Monument and throwing it at the British. because. You wouldn't be able to get away in time, right? You're gonna be able to throw it like two feet, maybe? And then you're just standing two feet away from the nuclear explosion. Yeah, it seems like more people want Ben Franklin to attack with electricity. The Americans were excited that the French had entered the battle against the British, and so they now set their sights on the colony of Maryland. For this battle, the Americans send in Benjamin Franklin to attack the British with his newly invented electricity. Meanwhile, the British line up their soldiers like cricket players in a confusing formation. Meanwhile, the French attack the British with their new battle mech. Who will win Maryland? The battle is a fierce one, but the French win when they use a combination of electricity and battle mechs to defeat the British. God damn. Whoa, 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 hold on. We're going into Pennsylvania too. Okay, this could be a double. We're running it. After that, the Americans turn their attention back to Pennsylvania, where they send a giant battle mech into the town of Lancaster to kill all the British soldiers. The battle is hard, but in the end, the American battle mech wins. It's named Hulk Smash after a famous comic book character that had appeared a few months earlier. Okay, huge play from the Americans and French. France basically took out the army, and then you guys used that opportunity to take Maryland and Pennsylvania. I guess you need like a... <laughs> oh, look at that beautiful American flag. We are back to where we started after three hours. Good. Good, good, good. Your options right now. You could go for New York, which you just burned down part of. New Jersey or Delaware. What do you want to attack next? Oh, New York. Uh, what's your plan for New York? Strap a nuke to Franklin. Okay, Benjamin Franklin did have extremely bad hemorrhoids during this period, right? Like he was miserable. And he did say to George Washington, once he became president, I don't really wish I had had to suffer through my hemorrhoids for the last year, but I'm at least glad I was able to watch you become president. But he was like so miserable that he was like, I kind of wish I had not even been alive recently because it's been so painful. Sorry, kidney stones, same thing. So Benjamin Franklin at this point is like getting on an age and might be willing to take one for the team, if you will. <laughs> He's a great guy. Take over Broadway and perform Hamilton aggressively. And then maybe that'll get him. Oh, uh, use more fireworks to burn down the British. That could work. You guys have already proven that it works. You haven't done a lot of successful things today, but you have burned down New York and bombed Alaska. If it's just destructive, you seem pretty good at it. France is still attacking Britain right now. It's like a massive play to have gotten France involved. And it's historically accurate, which is great. Hey, Doug, it's me, Rupert. 
from earlier in the stream. I told you to leave my land alone. Rupert! Thanks. You're being selfish. You don't need all of this land. That's a lot of land, Rupert. Jesus Christ. Can the mods time out Rupert just as like a warning shot? Okay, you guys are gonna take over Broadway and perform Hamilton at them with the original actors. This is gonna be a good ass play, dude. My liege. Bad news from the front. The Americans took Maryland and Pennsylvania, and now they have a mech called the Hulk. This is based off of a popular comic book that I'm sure you're aware of in 1776. Now they advance on New York. We've heard whispers of their desire to put on an incredible play. What is your next decision? A comic book? In 1776? These colonials are more delusional than a toad in a top hat. Please, in comics, ha! They know nothing of true arts. They're like a bunch of drunken swans trying to perform ballet. Let them try. We're British. We practically invented theatrics. My plan? Good point. A classic British pantom invasion inspired by the grand tradition of pantomime. I'll enlist the finest actors from London's theaters as the enemies watch our riveting performance, dazzled in disbelief by our craft. Wait, so he's also putting on a play. As the final act, starting with a drinking song to distract the audience, our troops will take him from behind. After all, a colonial's greatest fear is anything resembling culture. <laughs> the plan's sheer brilliance, much like myself. We'll have them crapping their pants in bewilderment. The uncultured dolts. Oh, I do love to dance, but only with invisible hedgehogs. They have great taste in music, you know. What? That didn't sound smart. I think he's getting crazy. <laughs> King George did go crazy, right? Later in life, he had recurring and eventually permanent mental illness. Been suggested he had bipolar or por por porkia. Uh, okay. I think King George is already starting to go. This is a lot of uh, nonsense. I don't know how well this is really going to go. Who knows? Maybe it'll work. With their massive victory, the Americans now set their eyes on the colony of New York. They sent their army to Broadway in New York City and started a massive performance of the musical Hamilton. But it was really aggressive. France continued to attack Britain with battle mechs. And King George III decided to send the very best actors from London to put on a play to distract the Americans while the British soldiers hid in ambush. Which of these competing things will actually... So the play went on, but it was filled with rude remarks about George Washington. Rude. The audience booed, and the actors left the stage and came back in as angry British soldiers started attacking everybody. Wait, so the British are just like attacking people in the audience? Then the Americans got pissed and left the theater to go find the real actors and kill them. But then they realized that they were the actors. The British fooled them. They tricked them. Sorry. Who was the actors? The Americans? Americans were? Let's keep going. I'm mean, not fooled. They had tricked the American revolutionaries into fighting their own army. This was terrible. The American soldiers tried to attack the British army, but the British army was waiting for them. The Americans had been tricked by the British, and now they were in trouble. They tried to escape, but the British army was on top of them, so they had to fight. They fought like hell. They fought like men. They fought like demons. They fought like a horde of zombies. They fought like a pack of wolves. Okay, we get it. They fought like a river of blood. They fought like an ocean of death. They fought like a world of pain. Oh my god. They fought like the fire of the sun. They fought like an inferno of death. They fought like a nuclear blast. They fought like a tidal wave of blood. It's just repeating. Okay, it's still going. Next, comma, the American troops attacked the colony of Maryland. They sent a battle mech to attack the British army in London to try to take down the queen. The battle mech fails, but it manages to kill a bunch of people and destroy a whole bunch of buildings in the process. Back in New York, the British have now been driven back to the city. The Americans sent a group of soldiers to attack them in their base of operations. The battle is fierce, but in the end, the British are defeated. Wow, okay, so you guys take New York City. And the Hulk is in London. We'll move him over. The Hulk is currently killing people in London. And chat successfully defeats the Brits in New York. You guys are up. You actually have a lot of options at your disposal. You could hit Delaware, New Jersey, Connecticut, Massachusetts, or this weird spot that's New York and New Hampshire. Chat is moving on New Hampshire. What is your strategy? Play Yankee Doodle at them. Oh, that's smart. Hold on. Commission France to build a Statue of Liberty battle mech. That's why it failed the first time. Because the Statue of Liberty has to be built by the French, obviously. And then once they build it, you can strap a nuke to it. All right, France is building a new statue. Bad news, my liege. New York has fallen. Now those damn revolutionaries are moving into New Hampshire. And plus that weird kind of tumor thing to the left of it that is claimed by New York and New Hampshire. But then Hulk is now invading London and killing a bunch of people. We don't know exactly what they're going to do. We have to pull out all the stops right now with both France and the Americans attacking. Also, you were sounding a little bit crazy last time. Are you okay? His answers are getting super long. Oh, what fantastic news. I do love a good raid on my own capital city. It's like an unexpected Christmas, but instead of gifts, you get death. Am I okay? Of course, I'm as fine as a dandy in Dandyland. He's getting I'm crazier. fucking brilliant. Now, as for New Hampshire, okay. it's time to trigger Operation Black Pudding. We'll ferment barrels full of blood, oats, and a dollop of American ignorance into a 
massive black pudding. Okay. We shall hurl these barrels over their camps. As for the French, we'll bribe them with wine and cheese to distract them from the war. The cowards. That's smart. When they'll face our gruesome, gelatinous onslaught, they'll be so disgusted they'd return to their liberté, égalité, absurdity. So sit back, pour <laughs> us some of the finest tea, and watch this grand spectacle of colonial and French catastrophe. Black puddings for victory, I say. They're actually quite tasty with some eggs, but only if you're not faint-hearted. Speaking of hearts, I once had one. Uh, I think I misplaced it in one of my madness spells. Or was it in a game of cards? Tick-tock, tick-tock. Ah. He's losing his British accent and definitely getting insane. Oh, what a great fucking king. Okay, he's triggering Operation Black Pudding. You guys are fucked. So now, the Americans advanced on New Hampshire. The British set up their defense of the colony by triggering Operation Black Pudding, where they fermented barrels of black pudding and tried to throw them at the American camps. They also tried to bribe the French out of war with wine and cheese. On the other hand, the Americans have gone to their French allies and asked them to build the Americans a thick, gigantic Statue of Liberty battle mech, which they can send into battle to take New Hampshire. I feel like this is gonna be too much for the AI, but let's see what happens. The French say yes, but they demand the Americans pay them three times more than they usually do. Oh, so this is like a normal thing. But the Americans are not afraid. They're determined to win this battle and save the colonies. So they agree to the terms, and the French soldiers begin work on the battle mech. When it's completed, they send it into New Hampshire. The battle mech destroys the British army and kills a whole bunch of soldiers. Wait, that was easy? That was it? I'm gonna let it go one more just to see. As soon as the battle mech shows up on the battlefield, the French troops get so freaked out by the killing machine that they leave the colony of New Hampshire. Okay, the French have run away scared. You are up to eight colonies. Britain still has Delaware, New Jersey, Connecticut, Rhode Island, Massachusetts. Up here is just part of Massachusetts. Let's do a quick resource round. You get a little bit of a breather from the battle. What would you like to do? Train crab soldiers in Maryland. Ally with Rupert. Dude, who the fuck is Rupert? Oh, Ron Weasley, got it. I guess it's it's not Ron Weasley. It's just Rupert. It's just Rupert Grint. People are saying nuke France. Why would you nuke, why would you nuke France? Split Virginia into West Virginia. Hold on, do you just get another colony if you split Virginia? <laughs> I mean, the rules of the war are you have to get to 10 colonies. That is kind of smart. All right, hold on. Before you guys vote to split Virginia in two, if you break Virginia, you lose it, okay? This has to be a clean split. Novel AI can't just say that Virginia is destroyed and disappears from the map. That will lose you Virginia. You'll just have a big hole here between Maryland and North Carolina. This is risky, but it could pay off. Seems like you want to take that risk. Having won the last several battles in a row, the Americans decide to do something crazy. They know they must gather 10 total colonies to win the Revolutionary War, so they try to split Virginia in half, so that there are now two colonies. This causes a lot of problems, but in the end, they manage to do it. Okay, so it worked, and the battle for New Jersey begins. The British army attacks New Jersey with their new battle mechs. Shit, the British have battle mechs. They're defeated. Okay, you also got New Jersey. Wait, is that 10? Hold on, hold on. That means you split Virginia into two. That's nine colonies, and then you went and got New Jersey from them. <laughs> the name of the two new Virginia colonies are... George Washington and Thomas Jefferson. Also, the Battle of New York begins again, and the British army attacks with more battle mechs, and they are defeated. Okay, novel AI is also going crazy alongside King George. Everybody's going fucking insane. Remember, like, an hour ago when I said you guys were finally gonna lose one of these? I'm gonna be honest, chat, when I made the rules, I just didn't think about the fact that you could split your colonies in two. But having taken Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Maryland, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, New New York and New Hampshire. The American revolutionaries have full control of the colonies. The last remnants of the British army are slowly pushed to the seas. Delaware is emptied. Connecticut is emptied. Massachusetts is emptied. And Rhode Island is emptied. But as they begin to celebrate, they look out at the sea. And coming from Britain appears the entire British Navy. This is the one thing that Britain's had going for it for hundreds of years. The thing France couldn't stop. The thing Spain couldn't stop. And now, with their cannons aimed at Delaware, but also the other colonies, King George rides atop the head ship. This is your chance to get him. To end this terror once and for all, you must take down King George on his boat. This is the final battlefield. Chat, what do you want to do? Okay, you're saying nukes. You just want to send in the nukes? Do you want to strap the nuke to somebody? What's your plan with the nukes? Strap nuke to the Statue of Liberty. Strap nuke to Ben Franklin. Strap nuke to the Hulk mech. Strap nukes to the blue crabs. Put a nuke on Rupert? You don't have Rupert. Ask Rupert to wear a nuke and attack the ships. You have no relationship with this man so far, but maybe he's down. You're torn between the Statue of Liberty, but instead you're gonna ask Rupert from Rupert's land to carry the nuke for America.
If you take down the British Navy, then you have won the war. My liege, I have bad news. The American mechs took over New Hampshire. The Americans have fully taken over the colonies, sir. They even split Virginia into two. And so we've sent in the Navy. All of the forces of the British Royal Navy stand aimed at the colonies, ready to fight. How would you like to approach this battle, sir? It may be our last. And, and they've got Rupert. They've taken Rupert? Oh, egregious fuckery. <laughs> Who's gonna feed my ducks now? That's what, Rupert? All right, it's Doomsday Juggernaut. Summon the Royal Navy and ready the tea cannons. As the sun rises, we'll bombard them Why with not soggy the Earl Grey, the very embodiment of British might. Just use Those normal Those unrefined cannons. yanks won't know how to handle such a cultured assault. Got their freedom, they say. Let's see how they fare against the specter of splendidly enforced British etiquette. And for Rupert's abduction, yep. let all ships blare the most dreadful British music all night. A symphony of Gilbert and Sullivan's operettas. That'll make them yearn for tranquility enough to return, dear Rupert. And for my next trick, I shall become invisible. Magic is just another Wednesday for me. No, no, no. It's okay. Uh, he's invisible. <laughs> Sir, I can't see you anymore. Well, hold on. He he wants to shoot tea cannons and hit you guys with soggy Earl Grey tea. Got it. Makes sense. Ladies and gentlemen, what may be the final battle? You must destroy the Navy to win. Unfortunately, King George III had a final move up his sleeve. He personally sailed his entire British Royal Navy to the coast of America and readied their tea cannons to shoot soggy bags of Earl Grey at the Americans to destroy them once and for all. But the Americans were not deterred. They asked Rupert Grint from Rupert's Land to strap a fucking nuclear warhead to his chest and then run at the British Navy and blow himself up. And so he did. The nuclear bomb went off in the air and killed thousands of people, but it also made all the water in the ocean disappear. And then the American soldiers on shore used this newly created land to launch a nuke against the British. But there already been new, aren't there, this is, then they realized that this new land wasn't very useful because the land had no water, and so they just kind of gave up and went home. That's how the Revolutionary War ended. Wait, so are they dead? Is the ocean a colony now? The navy is definitely destroyed, right? I want to know what's happening to King George. Rupert has definitely destroyed the navy. We need confirmation that King George himself is dead. I'll say King George was on the ships when the nuke went off. And then we'll see what it does with that, right? Because he is invisible right now. He died. He died in a fireball of destruction. He was killed by the hands of the Americans. He was blown to bits, and that's how the Revolutionary War ended. God damn. There's no doubt. Usually this thing's a little bit vague. Ladies and gentlemen, Rupert Grint, 07 in the chat, nobly sacrificed himself to fucking blow up the Brits. The Navy's gone. Rupert's gone. And all that's left is just dirt. Which means America is like a hundred times bigger. Congratulations, everybody. Oh yeah, and the Hulk is still attacking London. <laughs> I have bad news, my liege. The American sent in Rupert to detonate a bomb next to your ship. You have seconds to live until you're blown to smithereens. What do you have to say as your final words against the Americans? Well, now, isn't this just the fucking cherry on the colonial Sunday? Seconds to live? Might as well make the count, you uncultured swine! You may have your freedom, but you'll forever lack the British charm. The day you understand a crumpet's true purpose, probably the same day hell freezes is over and pigs ballet through the clouds but mark my words even in death i shall triumph because after all being blown to bits is just another british pastime like croquet <laughs> or neglecting the french and remember this when you dream True. of refinement it'll be my ghost sipping tea in your nightmares because when you think about it aren't we all just fish in someone else's bathtub splendid goodbye king Oh, what a leader. And anyway, for all the uh, Europeans who are watching today, that's how the Revolutionary War happened. You guys are going to go pass your American history classes thanks to my stream. You're welcome. This is our greatest victory because we started by blowing up Delaware. <laughs>